Hello everyone. This video is about absorption of carbohydrates. Digestion of carbohydrates completes when food material reaches the small intestine. And during this digestion, the complex carbohydrates like polysaccharides, oligosaccharides, they are converted into the simpler forms that is monosaccharides because only monosaccharides are completely absorbed from the small intestine. And the rate of absorption of these monosaccharides is, for example, if you take galactose, its rate of absorption is 110. Next comes glucose with a rate of absorption of 100. And uh, monosaccharides with least rate of absorption are arabinose, xylulose. And this difference in the rate of absorption is because the mechanism by which they are absorbed. When you see the galactose and glucose, they are absorbed by the active transport whereas the remaining sugars which have the low rate of absorption they are absorbed by the simple diffusion. Coming to mechanism of absorption these monosaccharides are absorbed in two ways passive transport and active transport. Passive transport does not require energy. Again it includes two types of uh, passive transport like simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Simple diffusion means it depends upon sugar concentration gradient. The sugar is transported from high concentration to low concentration. And coming to the facilitator diffusion, it is mediated by a carrier. And sugars like uh, galactose and glucose, they are transported by active transport where it requires energy. And mostly it is applied by adenosine triphosphate. Coming to glucose transporters, glucose is transported by different proteins, transporters which are designated as GLUT1 to 7. Coming to their uh, tissue location and function, sodium dependent glucose transporter 1 and 2, these are present in different locations. As the name itself indicates, uh, this transporter requires sodium. And here along with sodium the energy is required for the transport of these sugars because they are transported against the concentration gradient. So when you see in the picture from the intestinal lumen galactose and glucose they are transported into the intestinal epithelial cells and that transport requires the sodium. So once they enter into the intestinal epithelial cells glucose and galactose they are transported out into the bloodstream with the help of GLUT2. But sodium which entered into the epithelial cells from the lumen has to be transported out of the cell into the bloodstream that requires the help of a protein called as sodium potassium pump. So here this pumping out of the sodium from the intestinal epithelial cell into the bloodstream takes place in exchange for the sodium. So when three sodium ions they are moving out of the intestinal epithelial cell into the bloodstream in exchange of the two potassium ions which enter into the intestinal epithelial cell from the bloodstream. So this exchange requires energy supplied by ATP. So ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. Coming to other glucose transporters which does not require sodium. First one glucose transporter 1. It is present in tissues like RBC brain colon and its function is it is involved in the glucose uptake in most cells. GLUT2 it is present in the serosal surface of the intestinal cells, liver, beta cells of pancreas. And this glucose transport 2 has low affinity towards glucose. That means glucose transporter 2 can transport glucose only when the concentration of glucose is more. In this way, this uh, GLUT2 acts as sensor, glucose sensor in the beta cells of the pancreas. Now coming to the GLUT3 transporter, it is mainly present in the neuron and brain. It has high affinity and that means even at low concentrations of glucose, this transporter can transport glucose into the tissues. Coming to the next one, glucose transporter 4. It is present in the skeletal muscle, heart muscle and adipose tissue and its significance is 
it is insulin dependent transporter so insulin mediates the expression of these transporters in the sites or tissues like skeletal muscle heart muscle and adipose tissue then only glucose can be transported into the tissues glut5 it is also known as fructose transporter because the main sugar transported by this transporter is fructose and this is present in the small intestine testes sperms and kidney and the last one glucose transporter 7 this is present in the endoplasmic reticulum and this is involved in the transport of glucose from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cytoplasm so this is about the absorption of carbohydrates thank you